All right, thank you so much for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, this is This Morning on ITV. But let's quickly take you straight to our first talking point. We're actually looking at towards our violence-free 2023 polls. And we are being privileged to be joined by some political and uh, public affairs analysts that will be joining us to extra the front line of the discussion. From my immediate left is a he or so a CJ. He's an author and also a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, sir. Okay, sitting close to him is Gloria Ijofo. Gloria Ijofo is a public affairs analyst. Gloria, good morning. Good morning. And of course, from my extreme left is a clergy and a legal practitioner. He's also uh, a civil activist. He's in person of uh, Barrister Israel Adodo. Good morning, Barrister. Thank you, sir. All right, let's just start with you. There has been consistent attack on INEC facilities. And uh, to our next extent, Nigerians are worried if this attack won't lead to disrupting the forthcoming election. What is your take? Well, uh, election violence or pre-election violence is not new. It has been with us as whole as the country. As a matter of fact, even in the pre-colonial area where few houses or positions were contested, there was still violence. It was so bad that even then, when people cannot get to you, they go to your crops, they go to your farm, they destroy your crops, just to the, the, the motive is to destabilize. Destabilize the system, destabilize the opponent. And I expected that as we evolve, as things improve, that modalities will be in place to stop it or at least minimize such occurrences. Anyway, we are not surprised it's there. Uh, it is the pattern of the hood order. It is what they are used to. But the fact remains that we must continually educate ourselves, educate the youth, educate the people on the need for them to understand and appreciate the fact that in this era, electoral violence is not going to work. Mm. It's not going to work. With the advent of the new electoral heart and all of those things, if you are going to resort to electoral violence, you may not achieve too much. Okay, now, d despite the sensitization and uh, education of uh, the electorate, we still find crop of people fermenting trouble. Somewhere in Kaduna, um, a particular political party lost uh, one of their women leader. So, Gloria Joffo, uh, as, as, as a public affairs analyst, and of course, and as a mother, uh, do you think the problem is from the home or with the politicians? So, uh, a CJ, critically speaking, okay. this attack is it, is it politically motivated? Uh, yes, yes. I would say it is because it is a you know it is it, it is it, you know, it is a way or it's a method which those you know those at the political level used to disorient you know, disorient or disorganize the electorate. Okay. Yes, thereby instigating them to do what ordinarily they wouldn't want, want to do. Mm. So, then uh, see speaking for that, and let me also like add to what uh, my barrister friend has said. Mm. Uh, the issue of uh, uh, the attack you mentioned, it's not new. Yes, it's not new to us. So, okay. uh, it has been there. So, and I believe the, what we should be after at this time is, uh, you know, is on how to arrest it. Yes, it's on, on how to arrest it to, to prevent it from further degener you know, degenerating to something less. Mm. Okay, so... I, I believe I will. So, so what, what measure do you think the government or the electoral umpire should, uh, should start putting in place? The truth is there are a lot of measures. Okay. Yes, even the electoral heart devoted the whole chapter, chapter 7 of the electoral heart, addressing electoral violence. Trying to explain to the people that once you get involved, the penalties are severe. You know, before now, we used to believe that uh, once you are involved in electoral violence, that uh, people go scot free. It has not been the case. I think uh, statistics have shown that for the past few years, 
or even they just last conducted the election, mm. that more than 125 persons were charged to court with the uh, body already having judgment in these cases, up to 25 or something. Uh -huh. So the point is, before now, what we have seen is people being used as instruments to distort the electional process. And at the end, after the election, we have seen that they have given garages, they are giving parks to handle. And because of that, they were motivated. Mm. Now, you have to be a warlord. The minute you are seen as a warlord, in fact, when I was growing up, I used to attend political meetings. And in such meetings, it's called that some mornings were devoted for security. Before I was taking security with the police, but I was surprised on the election ground that security money devoted by political parties are not for politic, are not for uh, the normal security mm -hmm. architecture. Mm -hmm. Boys are recruited, okay. courtists are recruited, mm -hmm. touts are recruited, talks are recruited, mm -hmm. and they are financed. And most times, if you are able to really deliver the job at the hand, your reward becomes being a task collector in a particular terrain. And we have seen people becoming very great. So, so, you are, so you are saying this crop of old other politicians yes. still find a way of recruiting people Up to, to now, carry out their doing bid. That. The, one of the greatest fear, like I've expressed here before, mm. outside um, vote buying is electoral violence. Because the motive, like I've said, is to keep the people in fear. You create a political hard party. You create a system where people are afraid to come out. Children, parents are telling their children, don't come out. Or when you come out, you die, all of those things. So people are not afraid. So they believe when that is done, a few persons come out who they have a shot of security, go out and vote, and they get the election the result that they desire. Okay, uh, Gloria Joe, for in time past, we've seen where innocent people lost their lives. Those who really want to express their franchise, those who want to cast their vote, lost their lives. Maybe by, by, by raising of attack in the polling unit. Some could be hit by stray bullets. Now, what should we start doing as parents? If you say, if you say it's vibers, according to you, you say it takes two. <laughs> so if the government have their own share and parents too have their own share, uh, what should we start doing as parents so that we can start sensitizing these people, especially the young folks who have lent their voices and taken time to get their PVC? Never you do that. Right, that you advise them to go there and do what they are meant to do and leave. Now the issue is that some persons go, they cast their vote and they start lingering around, walking about. You have to want. protect the vote. So they are not supposed to. Are, 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 are they? <laughs> cast your vote, be safe, and go back home. So we should not defend our vote. No, they are there to defend. So just cast your vote. Cast your vote and go home. And go home. Well, okay, you Barista Israel, you're, you're having a different view. You must speak around mm. safe. Okay, Barista Israel, you have a different view. Yes, my view is not totally different. I understand perfectly with her. Mm. Because when you have a system where there's this security, you have to take measures. So it's expected that your children should go out, vote, and come back. But we are also told by these political parties mm. that don't vote and go home. <laughs> vote and wait till it is counted because mm. there are chances of manipulation. Man this to be manipulated. So uh, I still believe that uh, leaving the scene totally will not totally also help. Let the government secure the voting environment. Mm. I yes. understand that recently that um, the security architecture of the police, when they go to polling booth, they are told not to do anything. It's just to stand. Most times, the highest they go with is it, just a club. Mm. You are not allowed to go with fire and a lot of those things. And these things are things that the political parties know. Because of that, they are willing, they are not afraid, they are not discourage they can come to the uh, political environment i have been an electoral ground where somebody came shot into the air before the ballot box were taken more uh, papers added to it though that, that, that was in now. the past yes that okay. will fail now see, but at least the yeah. idea is to scare the people away. okay let, let's come to you now cj you want to share you want to share mm, uh, yes topic? yes yes let me quickly come in you know from the angle she spoke from like okay. you know you're going to the uh, to the polling unit mm. vote and vote and but another yeah. thing is this even this youth you are talking about that have been hitted by spring bullets. The, the way going, besides just going to vote, they also have their, you know, other motives. You know, ripping, ripping because because these days R ripping in what sense? Uh, now? Yeah, uh, I expatiate it. Okay, fine. Ripping. What I mean, what I mean is this. Okay, a, a young, a, you know, a lad mm. leaves home going to vote on election day. Mm. As he's going there, he has his uh, PVC. Mm. He has uh, uh, another another thing like 
exchange of using PV, no, exchanging PVC for something. For cash. So, for, for cash, yes, for cash. So that, that, that's what you mean by ripping. You <laughs> mean by ripping. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yes okay. So, so such, such could also lead to mm. uh, you know, the stray bullets you mentioned. And also forget, even these people in charge, even these people, this youth, this youth, they are still being used for even the shooting. Okay. Yes, even the shooting. So I, you know, I believe, like as she said, parents should not discourage their children from voting. Uh, they, they, they should vote. They, they, should, they should go there. They cast their vote, and I believe they can even you know, still remain there peacefully, rather than you know engaging in argument, you know, trying to still promote uh, you know a particular candidate. You know, what, you know, what is that? You know, there because you know, still, yes, no, such yes, yes, such such can lead to yes, you know, violence you know, because. You tell me this, I tell you this. At least it could result to fight. Okay. You know, other, other, other things happen. Well, well, I'll certainly not tell you anything that result to fight now. Okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's okay. come to you, Israel Adodo. Should we expect what has been happening in the past to continue? Well, if if, if yes, what impact will it have in the election? No, we don't expect. We expect a very far difference from what has been on ground because and the laws are now trying to see how these things can be cleared. Now. Uh, very recently, the National House of Assembly proposed a bill. It's the National um, Electoral uh, Committee. Now, what they are to do is to ensure that uh, elect um, electoral violence offenses are seriously dealt with. As a matter of fact, the law is stipulating that anybody found culpable will go in for 15 years. Okay. Yes. Or an option of fine of 40 million. Wow. It's on the head of a year, 4,000, 5,000, 40 million. Sure. So people are beginning to be aware. And with the cashless policy, yes, that when 40 you get, million might not be not, that easy to not, get. Yes, that when you get involved with these things, there are dire consequences. There are penalties. So we don't expect what has been the order of the day. We expect a change of mindset. Youth should wake up. Refuse to be used. Like we have always said, most times the politicians using you, their, children's, their children are not there. Three are not there. You can't be shooting gun for somebody who's child is somewhere in the UK relaxing. Yeah. After the election, the person comes back and is celebrating and even gets an appointment. appointment. So at the end, you are at the receiving end. Yeah. Yeah. So let the youth wake up. Don't be part of such yeah. evil. There's no greater evil than to distort a system that will violently impose an emperor, which at the end of the day, its effect or whatever is going to come with it will tell on every one of us. So I believe it's going to be different, totally different. Okay. And if it's allowed to happen, it's mm. going to have negative consequences on our elections going forward. Okay. Uh, yes. Let me let me let me quickly contribute to what you just okay, said. Okay. Quickly. Yes. Recently, I I saw a video, mm. you know, where one of the candidates, okay, let's say the two the, the two candidates mm. vying for this current uh, presidential election, they were you know they were smiling together, shaking hands, you know. Then somebody now added something that when you go to his village now. What is happening there that when a, when a particular person in a political party is coming and another person from another party is coming, they just pass each other without greeting. Then I ask myself, why at this level? Why the candidates are embracing are each embracing other, themselves. eating from Just yes, dancing together, mm. celebrating together. You just, you know, you are electorates, you are keeping enmity. You are fighting. You are, you know, you are in a war with your, uh, you know, your brothers and sisters. What for? Because, because, it, because it, it will even happen that after these fights, this war, and let's, for instance, a particular candidate kind of wins, people, you know, you, you, you won't be remembered. They don't even know you. They don't even know you. Don't even know you. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so, so at this level, I believe we should, you know, we should wake up. So, Gloria Joffa, could it be that people are just bent at uh, doing evil? <laughs> people are just bent at doing evil. Yeah. Not, um, I would say the politicians are using the action to get to it. Yes. Yeah. They, are they, are using, they are using our rights against us. They are using the strong times against us. And they are devaluing the rights of Nigerians. When a man is hungry, he can do anything to get what he wants. And they know that quite well. That is the strategy they are they'll be using from time to now. So that's where the media house comes in, to sensitize them. Because even after they've given you what you think they want to give you, it's not even a quarter of what they're getting. Yeah. And after they get into the office, they don't even know you're just road to your streets. Trust me, during campaigns, they will find the way to that your deep end village to come campaign. But after then, you won't even see the representative who I'm talking to you about them. So I think we should be sensitized enough. The media has a lot to do. So, so far, Israel, don't you think 
uh, these young people, because mostly when you look at uh, this electoral uh, vote that are involved in violence during elections, they are mostly young people. So do you feel they are just seeing it like an opportunity to get what they want? Since those they elected into office, when they get there, you just forget about them. That's the mindset. That's the mindset. But okay. it's because you are collecting from them and bringing them in. They feel no sense of responsibility anymore because it is believed they have paid their way into such offices. Now, talking about young people, it will not be complete if we end the discussion without talking about the new trend of electoral violence. Before now, we are used to people going there to fight and all of those things. I have noticed from a careful study that if there's going to be electoral violence in this upcoming February election, it's not going to be the conventional one where people go to the field, they argue and they start fighting or talks home. Mm. What we pilot this set of, or this era of electoral violence, is going to be fake news. Yeah. Fake news. Because if you look at the danger that social media is currently doing, I mean, the way people are using it negatively. Mm. People sit at the comfort of their house, get a video of what happened in Pakistan, yes. and post it I and say, it. oh, in Kano State, this is what is happening right now. Yes. Yes. Without yes. verifying yes. that Muslims are killing Christians, there, that's what is happening, and that's what is happening at Christians. Where are, you, are you sleeping? What are you doing? People start looking, oh, Muslims are, the next day there's an attack. Mm. So if we are going to check electoral violence in this upcoming election, let's take our eyes from the conventional type. Mm. Let's look at, let's streamline news that goes out. Let's wash it. You are a young man, you are a young woman from the comfort of your room. Be careful the kind of news you repost. Don't just get somebody where somebody has, has, has is beheaded. And you post it and say, this is what is happening presently in Sokoto share State. Share, share, this video. share this video. Share, share, share. share. Nigeria, people share. are dying. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, people are running mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And most of these Northerners, with due respect to them, those in the North, when they hear that a Northerner is killed somewhere in the South, in the course of election, yes, the yes, next yes, day they are out yes, in the yes, streets. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. in 2015 alone, 800 souls were lost to election. The Nigeria security tracker showed it. And if you look at it, it was after the election. In news being circulated that are not true. And people get angry, go to the streets, kill themselves, and at their hand, you discover that these things were not exactly what we reported. So the media has a lot of work to do, and yes. it's not just limited to TV stations now. The most powerful media as we speak are the social media. We are anybody's a newcaster. Anybody's a news. <laughs> anybody's a dissemination of news. So we must watch it. We okay, uh, it. Uh, CJ, uh, recently, the United States government yeah. said uh, that they are going to sanction anyone who interferes with the 2023 polls. Yeah. Now, do you think we should be looking up to international body to help us regulate our elections? Yes, yes. Are we mature enough <laughs> as a country to take care of our election, electoral process? Um, yes, we ought to be mature enough, but we decided not to be mature enough. Yes, we ought to be mature enough to take care of our I process. mean, a country that is over 60. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Just like a country, you, know, you can also see someone of 60 years, even above, that, that is still be, you know, behaving, you know, taking lesser, like, you know, like a baby. Ideally, ideally, like I, you know, like I always say, mm. we ought to be at this level, electorally, technologically, educationally, because there are persons or there are countries that are, you know, they are, they, you know, they have gone there. They are already, you know, get to the peak. All it doesn't do is like es Expo. Oh, this is how they do it then. But at this level, if the, you know, the U.S. or, or you know, any other country, they want to assist us to get it right, you know, as it were, I don't think there's a problem about it. Since we choose to, you know, belittle ourselves, we choose not to uh, think, mm -hmm. reason. So since they want to, so I don't say anything, I don't say anything bad in this. You know, the most important thing at this moment is that we should get it right. Get it right. Yes. Okay, um, Israel Adodo, uh, to an extent, corruption is one of the reasons why people go haywire during elections. Uh, so what is the basis for choosing new leaders as we go into this new dispensation? You see, the basis for choosing new leaders is to, is to see changes. Now, when the system has overrun itself, we've seen the system, things being repeated over and over again. We complained of uh, the previous government that snakes were swallowing uh, money, mock is swallowing money, then a new one comes. Mm -hmm. And we also see money disappearing almost the same manner. It is expected that uh, the people are coming out to see a tangible change. 
a change of status, a change of the way of thinking, a change of the economic architecture totally. So the basis of any electionary process or why the folks should be fighting for uh, to see a difference in the election is to enhance changes so that the quality of life will improve. So let's discontinuous, let's, if there's any trace of corruption like you have uh, hinted, mm. it should, what, it is something that must be fought, must be fought by all and sundry to ensure that this set of persons who have perpetrated it, who has enforced it, are taken out of power. Because no government can work in the midst of this kind of corruption we are seeing. There can't be progress. There can't be progress. When the money that is meant for a, uh, a, a community, a society, a state is being used or end up in the hand of a selected few, there can't be tangible differences. So. We are coming out to ensure that changes. Okay, we, we certainly coming out to see that change. Well, the, it's the duty of INEC and security agencies to ensure we have a free and fair election uh, with the support of the security agencies to ensure that there is no breach of law and order. Mm -hmm. but, but do you think they are equipped enough for the forthcoming election, Gloria Jofo? So they say that. <laughs> so they said. So they say. I mean, we've seen several attacks on their facility. Mm. Now, I think the security agency should come on board. They should try to run their best and seek for to protect these facilities. Because an attack on the facility will also yes. probably affect the election. the election. There will be a huge affect. PVCs aftermath. will be destroyed. PVC, yes, yeah. destroyed. Materials, Sensitive materials will be destroyed. Will be scattered away. So that will be like a link to a loophole in the election. Okay. So I think the security agency should come up and do something about it. Okay, uh, uh, CJ, there's sure. this meter uh, that says um, one egg uh, spoils the rest, mm -hmm. or one apple destroys the rest. Okay. Now, now, could it be that one good politician, one bad politician, okay. destroy the reputation of others that have good intention? Um, let me, okay, you know, you know by, I, I will answer your question by quickly talking, you know, mentioning uh, this man, what's his name, um, uh, Nicole. Machivela, okay. you know, he said, you know, in one of his books entitled The Mafia Manager, you know, he says every family has its own shell of idiots. Yes. <laughs> so to me, every family, yes, every family has its own shell of idiots. Okay. So to me, it, it is an aberration to spread the idiocy of, of yeah, you know, of, of the idiot of a family to every member of that family. Okay. So, so what I'm basically saying is this. Uh, that a particular uh, party has and has a particular idiot, it's not enough to now just tag the entirety of that party to say, oh, everybody there, they are idiot. I still believe quite, you know, quite all right that there are some persons who belong to a particular party, they are doing well. Yes. Perhaps they have not been able to showcase themselves. They have not been able to come up to the level where we now know they say, yes, this person. But, but over time, mm. people feel no politician is clean to an extent. It, it, it's a myth. Okay. It is a myth. It is not true. Yeah, it is not true. It's a myth. So, there are, I, like I said, all politicians in Nigeria, if, despite how it is, yes, despite how bad it is, there are still good politicians in, in Nigeria. Okay. There are still good ones. Just, you know, like every family. Mm. You, can't, you can't just tell me that, oh, uh, because uh, it, there's a rapist in one family, every other person in it's that family, rapist. they are rapists. Mm. No, it's not true. You can't say that to me. I won't accept it. Because how many persons do I even know in that family? Mm. Just like, you know, a, 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 a book of mine, if, if I'm permitted to... to, to uh, no, no, the, uh, you, you can't uh, say it. You okay, can't. Okay, I can't. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to, 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 to say that. So, okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, Israel, do you share any thoughts? Uh, it's true. It's true. Uh, we have a lot of capable leaders in this country. Yeah. Yeah. Good politicians. The problem we have most times is the platform. Okay. Well, though the independent candidate idea came up, but we still believe that for a country with a growing democracy like Nigeria, mm -hmm. the place of structure is still very important. Whether the physical structure or the kind of structure we are seeing recently, but there must be a structure. The cost of funding election is one of the reasons why we don't see these good hands yes. that can do the job. That's the problem. The truth is we have leaders, we have capable, capable persons. Leaders. They have run their private companies because the truth is Beyond just projecting yourself as a candidate, what are your antecedents? How well have you been able to run your life? 
run your private uh, okay. investment. Okay. They run, yes, those are things that must be checked. And we have people that have done it very well. Yeah. But the question is, when they come to the political uh, platform, there are a lot of challenges, a lot of things dragging you, a lot of interest, a lot of interest, a lot of constraint. So that outside those, outside those, we have persons, and we believe in this country that one day the platforms will be given to these persons, and you'll be surprised at what this country will be coming for. All right, thank, thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, taking time. Because you wanted to say something, Gloria Gopo. Uh, yes, I think right, um, okay. Nigeria has hope for this time. We have, yeah. As you, you can see, it. we are tired, and we are going hard today with all our fullness to get the right person this time. We are getting it right. Trust me. All the youths are waking up. We are tired. Okay. And I can say there is hope for Nigeria. Okay. One of the best ways to get that hope to the end of the tunnel yeah, is to get your PVC. All right. Thank you so much, Israel, for taking time to be on the show. Gloria, thank you so much. Thank you. CJ, thank good you. to see you. Okay. All right. We'll be taking a short pause now. Then we'll come back. We'll go ahead with the second segment on the show. Then go nowhere.